Welcome to Whitstable, the start of a new great adventure, yes, Brompton by the Sea. Uh, just me and Mike today, unfortunately I make Simon not feeling too well at the moment, puffing from uh, that thing uh, whose name we do not mention. But uh, we're off on the Viking Coastal Trail, yes, the Brompton on the Viking Coastal Trail, so come with us for a journey of enjoyment and discovery. So our journey will take us along from Whitstable, along the coastal path, through Herne Bay, Margate, Lordstairs, Ramsgate, uh, where we will turn inland and then carry on through a couple of villages, Canterbury, back to Whitstable. So it's a beautiful day here in Balamoy, sun is shining, Sky is blue, sea is blue. The sea is that thing over there between the sand and the sky. Yeah. That's my Brompton. Mike is on the Ridley. Today. Looking very nice. There's a dog. I'm not sure what the dog is riding. Talk is interested in the Ridley. And now we're riding along the coastal path. Mike in front on the Ridley. Me bringing up the rear on the Bompton. Kissinger on the Vulcan in the thousand helmet developed by people who do thousand island dressing. I've got to say one thing, not entirely straightforward on the Vulcan, and that is riding one handed. It's not that, not that steady, if I'm honest. And now we have reached the uh, Georgian Resort of Herne Bay. And this is, uh, it's not a pier, I guess it's some kind of jetty, um, a jetty jetting out into the sea. And the resort of Herne Bay lies just over yonder hill. Mike has been to check the sign. Are we in luck, Muck? Yeah. Um, yeah? This is looking back from whence we came towards Whitstable, yonder far distance. I don't know why I'm talking in this ridiculous Shakespearean fashion. There must be a reason for it. There's the Bonton again. You're going to get sick of seeing that Bonton on this ride. You may not get sick of seeing me, because you may not see me that much. And now we have reached the statue of Amy Johnson, which for some reason I thought was Amelia Earhart. So who is Amelia Earhart then? Was she not also an aviatrix? I'm sure she was. Now, Amy Johnson or Amelia Earhart, as you may know, was not very tall and they made a special bumpton for her because she couldn't fit a normal bumpton. And this here is a replica of the bumpton that she rode, which is very generous of the bumpton people, I thought. Well, this is Reculver Roman Fort, which was the uh, setting 
one of the great films of the 50s with uh, Gregory Peck and Audrey, Audrey Hepburn called Roman Holiday. And they came here for a, a long weekend on the Kent coast, visited the Reculver Roman fort and had a whirlwind romance. And there is Mike taking a photo. A uh, big fan of the film is Mike, as are we all. Still blue sky, still sun shining. I'm not very aer aerodynamic on the Brompton, I must admit. And in fact, I'm uh, a bit like a sack of shit on a treadmill. If uh, that image is not too much for you. It's a fine sight though, isn't it? There's a, there's a plaque celebrating the, the Peck and Auburn romance. Nice place for a visit. Day out, long weekend, that's a holiday romance. If, uh, if you're lucky and love is in the air. Love is in the air. Who was that by? It was a hit, wasn't it, back in the Back in the 80s? Was it the Bellamy Brothers? I think it was the Bellamy Brothers, you know, there was, uh, what was his name? Anyway, Bellamy Brothers. Love is in the air. And so we continue to wend down Merry Way along this coastal path. There is a pretty brutal headwind I don't know if you can hear that. I can certainly feel it. with dogs and the other thing that gets on my nerves as you know there's a lot of things that get on my nerves is when you have say three people on a narrow path like this all walking side by side as if the path is just for them which as we know it is not it's for me. Oh, we've arrived at West Bay after a fair old thrash along the coastal path. I found it quite tiring, if I'm honest. Brutal headwind. But apart from that, the weather is very fine. There's the Brompton, looking fine in the sunshine. And Mike's Ridley there, and we're rather hidden by a couple of fairly large people. Now it emerges into the light like a chrysalis. Well, go on, say something. Can't think of anything to say. I've got sunblock on, by the way. In case people think I haven't. Hello Tan, in case you're wondering. And so we reach the resort of Margate, known as the Antibes of the North, or actually the South, well, the Antibes of the Kent Coast. And again, glorious day. These are the steps, famous the Chompkin Steps, seen in the great, one of the great battles of the First World War. Battleship Eisenstein, brother of Einstein, inventor, into the theory of time. There's the Brompton, and in the background, it's quite arty, 
certainly will agree. In the background is the Turner Gallery. Yes, the Turner Gallery, named after J.W. Turner, great artist of the 1950s. And uh, what a fine day it is for the Brompton to be on the Viking Coastal Trail. We didn't stop. We didn't stop at Cathay. Well, we did stop. And uh, we weren't sure if they would come out to service. So we finally managed to grab the idea of grab the eye of the waitress. She wanted it back and said, Do you come out? And she said, No. We had to queue inside. So the mic went off to queue inside and came back about 40 seconds later and said, There's an enormous great queue. But we didn't bother. So then we continue. What was that for, Mike? Yeah. Oh, Q. Do you, want to, do you want to do that again, Mike? Yeah. That was the, that's the width of the Q. Yeah, Mike is demonstrating. I always used to have a rough idea of the size of a Q. That's like the Bompton in shadow, isn't it? In my head, kind of dancing in the middle. Impressive, isn't it? Not really. Now this is known as Graffiti Alley for uh, very obvious reasons. No relation to Muhammad Ali, the uh, great boxer. And there is, uh, and there's David Attenborough up there, the artist responsible. Uh, for this particular installation. The keen artist, David Attenborough, came down. He's also very tall, which is why he was able to do that painting without the benefit of any ladders. Skill of that man is beyond compare. I cycled across a stretch of sand, which I shall try and show you. There it is. And I nearly came a cropper. For some reason, yet Mark, my, uh, Mike was able to carry on. This must be something to do with my famous lack of balance. More oh, graffiti alley there. This is uh, a mansion belonging to a Russian oligarch, which has been seized as part of the sanctions because of the Ukraine war. I think that's what they call brutalist architecture or what we in the West describe as fucking ugly. We're continuing along the Viking coastal path originally developed by the Vikings who were, as you know, keen cyclists alongside the rape and the pillage We're cycling through this posh housing estate and if you're familiar with John Buchan's The 39 Steps, you may be interested to know that there's a set of steps in this estate which lead down to the seashore and John Buchan was staying on the North Fallen Estate and that gave him the idea for his story. Interestingly enough, there aren't 39 steps. The mystery deepens. Well, I didn't take any film in the broad stairs, sorry to say. We just 
bed through, heads down, thumbs in the air. But now we have reached the sunny Ramsgate. And I've got to say, ladies and gentlemen, I went, I went off hungry. Mum, I went off hungry. Still a fine day. Wind has dropped a bit, just as well, because out of the sun and in the wind, I've got to say it was pretty cold. So, Ramsgate, and we have arrived at this really delightful cafe, which I came to once before with my friend Kirsten, she chose it. It's called the Home Front, and it's basically a recreation of the war, which, considering what's going on in Ukraine, it could be seen in rather questionable taste. But anyway, it's a recreation of the war, at least for us, 60 years ago as opposed to recreating the war in Ukraine, which of course is happening right now. But uh, I suppose we can blame the people in the cafe for that. Anyway, we're going to go in and have something to eat. Both. Starving. It's been viewed 25 million times. We've eaten and drunk our fill, tuna rain egg sandwich for Mike, carnation chicken sandwich for me, and then we split two crumpets with butter and jam. We had one each. Very nice ladies serving in the cafe, very nice food, nice ambiance, nice atmosphere. In fact, highly recommend it if you're in Ramsgate, even if you're not in Ramsgate. Go to Ramsgate and visit the Home Front Cafe. Give them some of your business. And why not? We're now cycling along this new, rather nice looking cycle path. Heading out of Ramsgate on the return journey. Looking forward to having the wind behind us instead of in front of us. It's been a little bit warmer than it has been because it's been rather cold. Still, a very really enjoyable journey. Very enjoyable. Okay, so we got a bit lost and uh, ended up on the main road. Managed to find a helpful chap who told us the way to go and he pointed in this direction. But I mean, look at the size of that sign. I mean, how are you supposed to see that? It's also blocked off, right, by cars and vans. So, I mean, about as much use as a pair of marzipan box cutters. Anyway, we seem to be back on the route. So we're now going to follow the Viking coastal trail through this gate. This is, well this is a Brompton, but in the background, hard to see with the GoPro isn't it, St Augustine's Cross. St Augustine was the man who brought Christianity and the Brompton Bicycle to the United Kingdom. And uh, it's called St Augustine's Cross because, wait for it, he was often in a bad mood. Let me see if I can get a better, better view of it without the sun skewing everything. 
Can we, uh, can we get a bit closer to it? How's that? Is that better? Not really cross though, is it? It's uh, an obelisk either. It's a kind of, it's a bit phallic I suppose, you could say. Perhaps uh, St Augustine was a, a noted phallus, not sure. Anyway, it's, uh, it's quite a nice area. We came past a sort of the building a new industrial, not a new industrial estate, a new housing estate. And uh, a bit of a ditch in the road, there's a couple of workmen there. Of course, Mike and I nearly fell into the, into the ditch, which I found highly amusing, which I thought was uh, in rather questionable taste myself. Still, what can you do? Right, I think that gives you a better view of St Augustine's Cross because it doesn't have the sun behind it. Well, impressive, isn't it? No? You don't think so? Okay, please yourselves. Frankie Howard used to say. I imagine St Augustine arriving in Dover and the gentlemen of the border force say, anything to declare? And he says, well, yeah. And they said, well, what? And he says, Christianity. And they're like, what's that? You can't bring Christianity into the country. 200 flags and a bottle of scotch. That's your limit. No, no, it's just tied up. I've got Christianity. And oh, God. Now the nutter. Made him through, lads. Made him through. And that's how Christianity arrived in... Uh, in Britain. So, thanks to our wonderful border force. Wheat. Fields of wheat. They're kind of like endless American prairies. Only they're not in America, they're in Kent. Been through uh, Minster and uh, Moncton, and the next village on our peregrination is St Nicholas at Wade. Just missed a turning. We're heading down to this rather Harry Roubaix, Belgian section with the, the river there beside us or canal, stream, whatever you call it. Very attractive, isn't it? Very attractive indeed. Not far now, um, for which I'm probably grateful, if I'm honest. A little bit tired. Crumpet's worn off, as it does. Well, the end of our great adventure. We fair topped it back through Hern Bay, and now we're back at Tankerton, almost near the car. And a fine day it's been too. You can see here we have the Tankerton beach huts. Soft, soft pastel colours in the evening light as we turn round. Coast, coast of path, Old Switzerland, to the sunset. My God, it's really silhouetted there. And we've done uh, almost 50 miles, about 50, uh, about 48 miles. And we could have done the extra two to make it up to 50. But in the words of Saint Augustine himself. enjoyed today's video and um, please remember that all of the revenue from my YouTube channel currently goes to support humanitarian projects in Ukraine and if you wish to donate you can do so at www.dec.org.uk Can you believe that fucking dog barking just as I was giving you 
the address to send your Ukraine donations. I'll do that again. It's www.dec.org.uk. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Big thanks to Mike for coming with me and putting up with me, stopping and filming every now and again. And I uh, hope to see you in the next video. Bye now. The Bompton in front of a beach hut. The Tankerton. Compton, by the sea.